right, welcome to this week's edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI The Americas. I'm Wade Kaler, Executive Director. On Tap this week is, is one of the most COVID-related experts we have here at FCSI. His blog has a plethora of information for any restaurateur that's deep into COVID-related areas or needs to come out of them. I highly recommend you take a look at it when we're all done here. I'm looking forward to our conversation today to get to know more about him. Please welcome the president of Goliath Consulting Group, Mr. Jay Bandy. Hi, Jay. Welcome to the show. Hi, Wade. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to talk with us. You know, the, the whole the whole season this year is all about getting to know our members. And, and I know we've had a few interactions and a few conversations, but I, I'm really looking forward to getting to know more about you today as we get through this. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How, how did you get started as a food service consultant? Um, you know, what kind of segments do you specialize in or, or, or what is your niche market? Well, our, in our 11th anniversary was uh, this past Saturday, November 1st. Oh, congratulations. And so, uh, thank you. Started the business uh, 11 years ago. Uh, prior to that was in, uh, you know, QSR food service restaurants for uh, quite a while. Uh, my last uh, corporate gig was nine years with McDonald's Corp. I was in a regional leadership position was a project manager for McCafe for the Southeast region and did all kinds of, you know, I, I would say fun stuff at McDonald's. I got a chance to really kind of not only hone my skills, but use my skills. Nice. Uh, and that kind of leads into what we do here at Goliath. And, you know, you, you said, what's our kind of niche in the business? Uh, we don't have one okay. and that's our niche. Perfect. So we do everything from, you know, Wade, you come to us and you say, Jay, I want to open a restaurant. We go, what kind of restaurant do you want to open? Where do you want to open it? What's your budget? And we can take you from that point and help you open the restaurant. We nice. go all the way through the entire process of developing a restaurant. And then from there, we do a little bit of everything. So from help clients with things like COVID, you know, like you said earlier, we're God, we deal with those questions every day. I just had one about an hour and a half ago. Okay. Uh, so, you know, direct operations, you know, we're, we're consultants to all areas. We write operations manuals. You know, we help design kitchens. We, yeah. you know, we help with marketing. I mean, yeah. today I was doing menu development for a couple different concepts. So nice. it's fun. Every day is different in our world. I think that's what's best about being a food service consultant is as I've been a you know executive director for 10 years and getting to know so many members it, this is one thing i hear from everybody is it's never the same job every week so it, that variety is what you all thrive to have you know you get done with one project you move on to the next one and then the next one next one and once in a while you get lucky enough that it comes back around and you get to work with the same client that you really enjoyed before but it's never the same job twice which is i think what drives people to be really good at what they do. If you enjoy that, that we'll call it chaos, if you will. If you enjoy that chaos and then moving on, then it's perfect uh, environment for somebody that's got the experience and the, and believes in themselves enough to do it as well. Yeah, I completely agree. It's what I call the opposite of the four walls, <laughs> which is what I call, you know, if you're in a restaurant as a general manager, kitchen manager, a chef, you know, if you're in a single unit, you know, it's, it's the same thing day after day, yeah. you know, inside those four walls. And I can do that. And, you know, I've got the awards and plaques not behind me today, but, <laughs> you know, I did that in my career, but that's not who I am. I, right. you know, I enjoy, you know, literally today I had probably 12 different projects I touched. Wow. I, you know, that's what I enjoy. So tell me, I, you know, reading a little bit more about you and trying to, and to do some research, tell me about Hobnob or cowboy chicken, some of the concepts that you're still involved with? Yeah, so Hobnob is a uh, sports bar, local tavern. It's a neighborhood concept. And, uh, you know, they are just just opened the third location, getting right open number four in January. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the neighborhood place that you want to go to. Nice. Uh, you know, uh, known Sean actually for about 11 years. That's the principal of the company. And, uh, 
you know, glad to be working with those guys. Nice. And then Cowboy Chicken, uh, you know, we're we're just kind of at the end of that for us, but okay. it's uh, taking on new ownership. Okay. And, you know, we I personally like the chicken business. And, <laughs> you know, folks that pick this up and they see it on social media are going to go, yeah, Jay knows Jay knows something about chicken. We were, you know, I worked back in the day with when I was with RTM on the Mrs. Winters, least famous recipe chicken. Then when Mrs. Winters imploded and went uh, bankrupt, I actually started working with the franchisees. I had helped open the restaurant oh, wow. as a consultant. So it's a very small world, but yeah, uh, yeah we're actually at Goliath now getting ready to pick up another uh, chicken client next okay. month. So. Very Love good. fried chicken. It, you just when you think you're getting out of it, you're right back into it again. Absolutely. Very nice. What what is your, you know, in all the years you've been doing this, what's the favorite project you've worked on? Whether it was with McDonald's or whether it's been with Goliath, what's the favorite one you've had? You know, I was, I was actually talking about it's such a small world, our food service industry. I was on the phone earlier with someone that was involved in the McCafe project at McDonald's mm -hmm. uh, from a restaurant operator from a franchisee side, but that was probably my favorite project. Uh, you know, it was about a year and a half uh, I worked on that project. I, I spent $65 million of other people's <laughs> money. I got a chance actually to influence the project, meaning, you know, I worked with menu management. You know, I worked with a huge construction team. Uh, and really, it was it was really a lot of fun. It was yeah. challenging at the same time, but also it was, you know, I took a lot of pride in being able to really, you know, give some input and, you know, my own stamp on that project. Nice. And, uh, you know, that was probably the the biggest. And also you just don't find projects of that no. scale no. Uh, very much in the food service industry. No, I agree completely. Well, to kind of flip that from the most rewarding project, tell me one time where maybe you made a mistake or you made a screw up. I, I love hearing about stories that we all make mistakes in. Tell me about your biggest screw up and what you learned from it to move on. You know, there's, there's been a few. Um, <laughs> so, you know, really it comes down to, you know, as we look at success in our business mm -hmm. and we look for mutual success. So, you know, I've definitely taken on clients and projects that we just haven't been able to get to the finish line. So yeah. I had a client, we, you know, after we first got it started in the consulting world and we took them on and, you know, just every, every which way we turned with advice or things that we needed executed, you know, they would go the opposite direction <laughs> to give you a, you know, a specific example. So, you know, I get the purpose of Yelp, mm -hmm. but I don't like to give Yelp money. Uh, you know, I've, I've, especially now, I know what I know about marketing with those guys and how they work. And so the client, you know, one week I tell them, you don't want to do this because it's just not going to get your results and it might cost you something. Right. So the, the client reaches out to Yelp, you know, they talk through it a couple of weeks, he hires them. His score goes down. So he goes from like a three and a half to three or whatever the switch was. Well, there's a direct correlation, which I told him to what your score is, to what your sales will be. You yeah. know, yeah. if you have a high Yelp score, you typically have good comp sales year over year sales. But if you have a lower score, people won't come to your restaurant and it affects your sales. So, Correct. you know, I continued on butt my head, you know, with this guy. <laughs> You know, trying to get him to, you know, take the horse and get him to drink the water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I learned that consultants do best when they just leave the horse at the lake and see if he'll drink. <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. I love that. Boy, well, that's a great segue into my next question, uh, in a way. Uh, what's one piece of advice you give to somebody that wants to become a food service consultant besides the horse into the lake? Uh, what do you, <laughs> what do you recommend or what, what's a piece of advice you recommend to somebody thinking about becoming a food service consultant? You know, the big thing is consulting is not what people think it is. Uh, especially run my own business. I've got staff, yeah. but even when I started out, you know, when I was basically, you know, my own, my own man, I had some partners, but you know, we're all out there just trying to get after it. Right. Is you really want to dig in and, 
you know, if it's like Saj, when you're, you know, uh, looking at cooks or chefs in your kitchen, you want to go out, you want to learn a little bit about the business just because you're a subject matter expert in the kitchen or with construction or right. marketing. It doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of impact on being a good consultant. Right. You know, a good consultant that has to know client relations, they have to know what their role is, they have to understand scope of work and, you know, to have some practical experience, you know, of going out and asking the questions and spending some time that with people in the field would go a long way. So a lot of people, yeah. you know, come out of the restaurant industry, you know, in a in a corporate role and are kind of cocky. And don't take the time to just go out and kind of learn the ropes a little bit before right. they get started. You mean you can't just go and hang your shield up and say you're a consultant right after you've left? <laughs> you can, but you're going to be eating up your savings. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What is, what's the one thing most restaurateurs don't understand about branding? Well, you know, the biggest thing we run into is folks don't realize if you have one restaurant, you're still a brand. You know, that's the thing we run into most frequently uh, is everyone's a brand. I'm a brand. You know, if you go out, Wade, and I know you've done it, you know, I have a brand across, uh, you know, the Internet. You know, I've done interviews. I I put information out there. I write blogs, et cetera. And it's no different for a restaurant. And then the, the basis of that, again, I had one of these conversations with a bigger client today is you really have to have a, a written, clearly defined strategy. You know, who are you? Right. You know, and put it down on paper and it can be, you know, it can be one piece of paper that defines your whole brand, but have it written and, you know, run yeah. it by somebody so it makes sense. And <laughs> we we find that a lot, that folks just don't have a written, you know, kind of brand strategy. Right. That was a great way to end the questions for the day. And, uh, you know, the one thing I like to do with all these interviews is uh, end the interviews with just a little bit more of a lightheartedness to them. So I've got a speed round I've created. And if you don't mind, Jay, I'd like to go through these. And all I got to do is I'll say a word or a phrase. You just tell me the first thing that comes to mind when I say these. Are you game for that? Okay. Sounds like fun. What do you think when I say the word scope creep? Uh, Alton Shields. (laughs) Favorite cocktail. Manhattan. Cook in or order takeout? Cook in. Favorite curse word? Hmm. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a stumper there. Uh, <laughs> they're all good. Uh, <laughs> I would agree with that, by the way. <laughs> all right. Uh, favorite junk food? Oh, wow. Right now I'd have to say, you know, like Twinkies. Oh, that's a good one. I like that idea. Uh, karaoke or lip sync? Lip sync. Favorite type of music? Uh, really favorite to the core is jazz from the you know 70s and 80s. Nice. Texting or talking on the phone? Talking on the phone. Favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. Double dipping when it comes to food, yes or no? Oh, absolutely. Cake or pie? Pie. Toilet paper, over the roll or under the roll? Um, over the roll. There There's go. another way. <laughs> exactly. And then last but not least, what do you think of when I say FCSI? Good friends and, uh, you know, kind of a place finally that uh, consultants have a place to belong. Nice. Thank you. That's a great answer. Well, that's it for today. Jake, tell me or uh, explain to the audience how people can find out more about you. Uh, the good news is I'm a pretty open book. So you can find us at uh, Goliath consulting.com. Okay. You can look me up on LinkedIn and, uh, you know, we're on all the social media channels. If you want to have some fun, go to my Instagram, which is restaurants JB. Very good. Very good. Well, Jay, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day again. I really appreciate it. Um, it's a great interview and I wish you all the best moving forward. And hopefully I'll get to see you again at another event very soon. Awesome, Wade. I look forward to that. All right. Well, that wraps up this edition of On Tap presented by FCSI of the Americas. If you enjoyed today's episode, help us spread the word, like, and subscribe to the channel, and uh, check back next week when we interview another FCSI member consultant. Till then, cheers. <laughs> <laughs>